Well, welcome to Pursuit Students. I'm glad that you're here. Um, and uh, as I started, and I just want to kind of continue just to recap some of the things that we've been learning uh, this semester. And that is, is that God loves us. We have a loving father. And that when we love him, that we truly want to live for him, that we want to honor him, that we want to obey him. Um, and, and Jesus teaches us this. He says that when we give our life to him, really our heart, it's not just our life, it's when we give our heart to Jesus. When we truly have a heart change and we want to live for Christ, that we, at that point, when we give our life to him, we give our heart to him, when we confess him, not just as our Savior, but as our Lord, the one who is the ruler of our life, that when we do that, that we become citizens in the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is now. The kingdom of heaven rules in your life today. The moment that you give your life to Jesus, your heart to Jesus, you live as a citizen in the kingdom of heaven where Jesus is Lord, where Jesus is King. And so I want you to know that although we might have been physically born into a world that's corrupt and a war world that's full of sin and a world that values things that, quite frankly, heaven does not value, that we have been reborn. And that rebirth that took place made us citizens in heaven. And so tonight's going to be a little different. Tonight, I just want to teach a little bit, not really preach to you, but teach. Tonight's going to be interactive. So I need you to be ready. In a few minutes, I'm going to have some students come up. And uh, we, if you come up, like you got to get up here quick and you got to be moving, right? But we're going we're gonna to be talking. I'm going to be asking questions. I expect you guys to do your best to answer. But we're going to make this interactive. It's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to learn some things. Tonight in your seat, for most of you, some of you may not have gotten this, but most of you have a piece of paper. That piece of paper has scripture on it. The reason we've given that to you tonight is not as a replacement to your Bible, but so that you can quickly move through the scriptures that we're going to talk about tonight. All right? So hang on to that. I pray that God, that you would actually leave here and take these scriptures and read them and meditate on them and pray about them in your personal time. Because this is God's word. Listen, the creator of heaven and earth loves you and I so much that he literally wrote us a book and gave us his word. That's mind-blowing. And so treat God's word with respect. And so I wanted to give you that tonight. But the first thing I want to do, and you guys can just yell it out. And whenever you yell it out, come up here. I'm going to get you to write on my, my board. But I want to know what you guys think. What are some of the things that the world or the culture values. Come on, write it up there. Write it up there under culture values. That's all right. We will just pick on you a little bit. You're just going to take up the middle of the board? Man, that's all right. Keep going, keep going. Material possessions. Do you guys agree with that? You guys agree with that? All right, somebody give me another one. What is something else in culture values? Yeah. Money. So that would kind of be material possessions, wealth. You're right. It, right. Yep. Not be. Fitting, get, up, get up here then. Fitting in. Fitting in. Write it down there. What? Fame. fame get up here. What? You were going to say fame? What else? What is, the, what is the world value? Yeah, right here. What is the world value? Image. Image? All right, come on. Get up here. What else? What else do you guys think? What's up? Yep, right back here in the back. What? Yeah, come up. Come up. Put it up there. Go. Popularity. Come on. Get up here. Image, popularity. Yep. What? Creation. The, so the world values creation? You got to tell me what you mean by that. Buildings, like they value things, stuff. Okay, I think that's material possession. I think we got that one already. Yep. Social media. Get up here and write it down. Yep. All right, get up here and write it down. Go quick. Get up here and write it down. What about this side of the room? What is the world value? You guys know? Any ideas? I can give you one. Uh, well, give me one. Let's go. Give me a second. 
All right, got to give you a second. Yep. Electronic devices. Yeah, get up there. You can write that down. Yeah. What? Gossiping. All right, get up there and write it down. All right, I got to hold up. Y'all going quick. Man, you have that beautiful handwriting. Look at this. Yep, right back here, Corey. Wrath? Yeah, come on. It's all right. Just do, get the best you can. Best you can. Yeah, right. Lust. All right, come on. Write it up there. What else? Yeah. Greed. I think we got that one already. I think we got it. Oh, no. Hold on. What happened? Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, don't reset it. Don't do it. Hold on. Wait. I don't think you can undo it. It's all right. I don't think you can undo it. Just keep writing. We're, we're, it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Keep writing. All right. Give me another one. What you got back here? Uh, drugs? Yeah. All right. Drugs. Value in drugs. What do you got, Ethan? Pleasure. Pleasure. I like that one. Get up here and write that down. Get up here and write that down. Anybody? What? 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 Alcohol. Alcohol? I think that's pleasure. We'll go with pleasure. What happened? What are y'all doing to my board? Yeah, whatever you leave your head. All right, just right. Oh, just right up here somewhere. It's right up here. It's all right. Listen, I'm going to teach you guys how to read, how to use my board later. All right, that's good. That's good. That's good. All right, everybody came up. Big round of applause. Y'all did good. All right, so we said a lot of things. I'm going to try to recap some of the stuff that you guys said. I'm going to do my best since y'all erased more than half of it. But I heard you guys say that uh, the world or the culture values possessions, material wealth, that it values uh, things like fame, things like fitting in, things like pleasure. Those are all the things that the world values. In other words, the, the world puts a high priority on it. Do we all kind of agree with that? Yeah. Okay. So now I want to hear from you. What does God value? All right, Addie, what? Love. Love. All right, put it up here. Now, listen. Listen, do me a favor. Don't erase each other's. Love, what? Happiness. I changed it. All right, perfect. Love, happiness. A willing heart. Get up here. Yep. Back of the room. Yourself. God values yourself. That's, I mean, if that's what you think, you can write it up there. Obedience. obedience. Come up here. Who said obedience? Get up here. What are you doing? I'll just fix it. I'll just fix it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Think about it. Think about it. Think. Think. I do. O B. E. D. I, I E, e oh, N C E. All right, right there. Fix willing heart. Nah, we're good. A lady told me you can't touch it with your hand. Ah, yes, you cannot touch it with your hand. Willing heart. All right. Yep, right here. What? Time? All right, come up. What are you gonna say, Ben? You and me. You and me? God values you. Uh, yeah, he does. He values us. He values people. Okay, us. All right. We already got that. Yep, right back here. Trust. Come up here. Come up here. Trust. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? All right, come on. All right, right down here. Right down here. Don't, don't put your hand on it. All right, hold on. Let's take a deep breath. Sit it right. Trust. Forgiveness. All right, what? Loyalty? Loyalty? All right, write that down. Huh? E N E S S. All right, you have to write right over here. Don't touch the board anywhere else. Yes. Being a light. All right, come here. Being a light. Being different. Who said that? All right, so right over here. Don't touch any of that. All right, last one. We're going to do one more. We're going to do one more right back here. What? Positive self-thought. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, come on. Okay. All right, now you have to be very careful with this board. So just as much as you can, put it in that area right there. All right, last one here. Positive self talk. Dude, it's amazing. All right. What's that? Serve it. Come on, Dalton. Get up here, buddy. Come on. Get up here, buddy. Now, if you, if you erase the board, if you erase the board, there's no mercy on you, okay? <laughs> All right. Just put it up here somewhere. Just write it up there. Serving others. Okay. Y'all got a good list here. Y'all got a good list. All right, so we see some things that the world values, right? We agree with that? Value. You guys said. You see some things the world values. Some of them we erased. We... And then we see some things that you guys think that God values, like love and obedience and forgiveness and being a light in the darkness and serving others. That's a really good list. That's a really good list. So I want to explain something to you really quick with this list in mind. Okay, this, I want you to have this list that you made. I didn't make it. You guys made it. I want you to have this list in mind. Jesus spent his earthly ministry, so when he was here on earth, the three years that he was in full-time ministry, right, from 30 till he was 33 when he died on the cross for our sins, he spent his earthly ministry explaining the kingdom of heaven. Jesus' values, Jesus' values, are not the values of the world. Jesus' values are not the values of the world. Jesus elevates what the world despises, like this, like this, like this. Jesus elevates what the world despises, and he rejects what the world admires. He elevates what the world despises, and he rejects what the world admires. Jesus turned upside down his disciples. Disciple means follower or learner. Jesus turned upside down his disciples' perception of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. In other words, everything they thought life was about, when Jesus started teaching it, he completely flipped it upside down. Completely. I want to give you an example. I want to give you an example. If you'll go to the scriptures I gave you, you should see Luke 6, 27. That should be the first one. Is that the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So you guys read along with me. Just read it along with me. So Luke 6, 27, this is Jesus talking. He says, but to you who are listening, so those of you that can hear this and understand it, that has an open heart, this is what I tell you. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, that means to deeply insult you. That's not a physical hit. He's saying when somebody deeply insults you, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt for them. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, don't demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. So he says, if someone insults you, if someone curses you, that you're to bless them, you're to do good to them, you are to pray for them, you're not to curse them. He says, if someone insults you, you're not to insult them back, that you're, you're to still love them no matter what. He says, if somebody mistreats you, takes from you, right? If someone manipulates you, then it's not about getting even. It's about giving in return, love. He would say, overcome evil with good. Now, you got to understand something. That is different than how we think. Do you guys agree with that? That is different than how you think. The way that most of us think is completely the opposite of that. If someone hurts me, you better watch out because I'm about to hurt you back and it's gonna be 10 times worse. If someone does this, then I'm gonna do that. 
That's the way that our sin nature thinks. And so this is a hard teaching. You know, when Jesus would teach things like this, you got to understand, this is difficult. This is hard to accept for a lot of people. This was hard to accept for a lot of followers of Jesus. Not just this teaching, but teachings like this. The point is this, that the things that, that Jesus teaches us to be a disciple of him is difficult. And that if we learn from Jesus... We either do one of two things. We either learn from Jesus and obey him, or we leave him. There's no in-between. We either learn from Jesus and obey him because we trust him and love him, or we leave him. So I want to show you this. Go to John 660. It should be the next scripture there, is it? John 660. Listen to this. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, well, on hearing what? Hearing Jesus' teaching. So that's what they had just heard, Jesus' teaching. Specifically, let me tell you what they had just heard. He said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. That I'm the thing that sustains you. And that you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, what's this vampire stuff, Jesus? I don't know about all of that. What he was really saying is spiritually, if you want to be in communion with me, it is my body that was tortured and crucified for you. Remember that. And it was my blood that was spilled for you so that you could have eternal salvation through grace. And it says here that the, the, the people that were hearing it, hearing his teaching, that many of them said this, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? This is hard. Who, how can we accept this, Jesus? What you just said. How can we accept, Jesus, that you just told me that I need to love my enemy? That when somebody hurts me, that I'm not supposed to hurt them. How can I accept that? How can I accept, Jesus, that you tell me that I'm not to love money and wealth and possessions? And it's harder for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is, or it's harder for someone that puts their trust in money than it is for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. That, that how can I accept, Lord, these difficult teachings? That's what they're saying. How can I accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling. Now, are you listening to this? These were people that were following Jesus. These weren't just passers-by. A disciple is someone who was following and learning from Jesus. They had come there to hear and learn from him. Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, what is this? What's this? What were they grumbling about? The teaching. They were grumbling about what he was teaching. Jesus said to them, does this offend you? What is this? What? The teaching. He said, does my teaching offend you? Now listen to verse 66. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. They couldn't accept it because the teaching was too hard for them. The teaching that Jesus was giving them was more than they could accept. It takes me to Matthew 13, which is the parable of the sower and the seed. That's where I go mentally. And, and, and Jesus gives this parable, and he said that the seed is the word. And he said, sometimes you put the seed out, and the seed falls on rocky ground. And he said the rocky ground is a person that, that when they hear the word of God, that at first they receive it with joy. They're excited about what Jesus has to say. But the first time any kind of adversity comes, or the first time anything comes against it, that it just simply washes away from them because there's no foundation, there's no root, because there was nothing, there was no depth to their intimacy, there was no depth to their relationship with Christ. And so they fall away. I believe that's the disciples we're talking about right here. You know, they followed Jesus for a reason, 
They were learning from him for a reason, but when his teaching became more than they could accept, they fell away. You see, there are several things going on right now in the culture that the culture tells you is okay and acceptable and right and just live your truth and whatever your truth is, is the truth and this is okay and that's okay and whatever. But Jesus has to say something different on the subject. And you just can't accept that. You can't accept that what Jesus has to say on the subject is the truth. And so you fall away. It happened here. It happens today. And so I need you to understand that Jesus' teaching is hard. And we either learn from it and obey it and honor it out of trust and love, or we depart from him. There's no in-between. So, Addie, I'm going to get you to come up, and I'm going to get you to do me a favor here. You pick whatever color you want. Can I make your pen smaller? Let me make your pen smaller. Okay. So, you do whatever color you want. This is, listen, you do whatever you want. You do your... No, I want all that there. Okay. So over where it says culture, I'm going to have you write something for me, okay? So you guys made a list, right, a few minutes ago? Now, I'm going to share my list that I made. My list isn't that much different than your list. In fact, it's almost exactly the same. But I'm going to make a list here. The first is what the world or culture values, outward beauty and appearances. Y'all agree with that, outward beauty and appearances? Does the world and culture value outward beauty and appearance? Outward beauty and appearance. Now, over here under God values, God values inward beauty and what's in your heart. Totally different. <laughs> totally different. Now, let's go to the scriptures. Let's go to the scriptures. I want to show you this. God values what's on the inside. Did y'all know this? The number one thing we spend money on in, in America is health and beauty. It's the number one thing that, money, that, that, our, that our finances are spent on. Everything from exercise programs to makeup to cosmetic surgery, number one surgery in the world, elective cosmetic surgery. Why does somebody get cosmetic surgery? They want to look better. They need validation from people, right? Ultimately, I, there's something I don't like about myself, and I need validation from somebody else. But listen, I'm not saying cosmetic surgery is bad. I'm just saying... We have a desperate need for validation, right? We can agree with this. But God values what's on the inside. Look at the scripture, 1 Samuel 16, 7. Let's see what God has to say on the subject. He says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. He's talking about King David, right? Samuel goes to anoint King David as king, and he shows up, and, 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 and Jesse, uh, David's dad, lines all of, all of his sons up, and the first one up there, he's a good-looking good dude, right? He's got the six-pack. He's ripped. He's about 6'4". He's dark. He, you know, got a tan. He's, he's right. And Samuel goes, surely, this is the one. This is the one. And God goes, no, that's not the one. And he goes all the way down the line. None of them are who God had picked. God had picked a shepherd boy, a teenager, who was small in stature. The Bible says he was ruddy looking. I'm not real sure what that means, but I'm guessing that he wasn't his brother. And this is what God has to say on the subject. He says, people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Isaiah 53, 2. Isaiah is prophesying here about Jesus. By the way, this, this prophe prophesying he's doing, what he's saying and what's being written, 700 years before Jesus is ever born. So he's discussing Jesus 700 years before Jesus is ever born. He's describing him. And this is what he says. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we would desire him. So people look at the outward appearance but God looks at the heart. you got to understand that's different. What the culture values here and what God values is different. All right, number two. Let's look at this one. I wrote material wealth, culture values. You guys said that one, right? Didn't y'all say wealth, possessions, stuff, things, money? Y'all said that? Okay. I had the same thing, material wealth. Now let me write over here what God values. 
spiritual wealth. Spiritual wealth. You're saying, well, what is spiritual wealth? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says that we brought nothing with us into this world. We'll take nothing with us out of this world. But let's look at Matthew 6, 19. Matthew 6, 19. It says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So Jesus is saying, whatever the idol of your heart is, that that's, what your, that's your treasure. If that's success, then that's your treasure. If that's a person, then that's your treasure. He's saying, don't store up treasure on earth because all that stuff is going away. You didn't bring anything with you into this world when you were born. And when you die, you aren't going to take anything materially out of this world. Can y'all, do we agree with that? Are you going to take any material object out of this world? No. And so he's giving you this truth. He's saying, but what you want to focus on is storing up treasure in heaven. How do you store up treasure in heaven? What do you guys think? How do you store treasure in heaven? What is that? What does that look like in real life? Go. Showing kindness to others. others. What else? Being patient. patient. What else? You don't have to write all that. What else? Go. Being respectful. (laughs) Helping people. You guys get where we're headed, right? Forgiveness. Turning the other cheek when somebody insults you having love for your enemies, not loving money and wealth and material possessions. This is storing up treasure in heaven. And so while the world values material wealth, God values spiritual wealth. Number three, write this one down. The world values uh, success, power, and self-dependence. So what does that mean? That means that when you look into the world, the more successful we think somebody is, the more we respect them. The more power we think they have, the more we we respect them. Self-made, independent, the more we respect them. So what does God value? Dependency on him. Dependency on him. So let's look at it. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Now, you don't have this one. This is not on your sheet. This is bonus. So I want you to just listen to me here because this is not on your sheet, but listen to what I have to say. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power rests on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. So the thing that God values is when we put our trust and faith in him alone. Because it's in our weakness. It's in our weakness that he is exalted. We can see his strength in our weakness. God values dependency on him alone. Number four, under culture. The culture values aggression, hatred, and revenge. Now, you may be saying, really? Do we really value hatred? Yeah. We value it a lot. Because when I turn on my phone and I start to scroll, it's all I see. It's all I see. Division, hatred, and dysfunction. It's it's every news story. And it's most of social media. And it's a lot of our post, if we're being honest. So the world values aggression, hatred, and revenge. But God values gentleness, mercy, and peacefulness. Gentleness, mercy, and peacefulness. Back to your sheet. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and I will give you rest for your souls. Who is gentle and humble in heart? God is gentle and humble in heart. That means that God has the, the word here in the Greek, if you looked at it, it's actually meekness. Now, meekness is not weakness. Meekness means gentle strength. Okay, meekness means gentle strength. It means I have all power and all authority. I can do anything I choose, but I choose to be gentle and kind and patient. It's like this. Anybody here like to ride horses? Who likes to ride horses? A couple of you. Anybody that's ever been around a horse, especially uh, like a, a quarter horse or a horse that's high spirited, you know one thing about that horse. That horse is in control. If that horse wanted to, it could rip you in half. It has the ultimate power and authority over you. But a well-trained horse, even though it has the ability to do that, will be gentle. It doesn't have to exert its power over you. And so God is telling us that he is gentle and he is meek. He has the ultimate power power and authority, but he chooses out of love to express that in gentleness and patience. Matthew 5, 5 says, blessed are the meek for they inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 7 and 9 says, blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy and blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. Completely opposite of what the world values. Next one. World values... Uh, being a good person, whatever that means. What does that mean? Yeah. Being respectful. Okay. Yeah, back here in the back. Shout it loud. I can't hear you. Giving back to your community. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Helping homeless people. Those are all actions. But I got bad news for you. None of us are good people. None of us. Nobody in this room is a good person. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you don't believe that, there, that, that, that we are not good people, then just think about what goes through your mind on a daily basis and all the negative, hateful thoughts that you have. What's really in your heart. If you don't believe that, think about a little kid that barely knows how to talk, yet knows how to punch another little kid to get a toy. Knows how to steal. Knows how to be angry at their parent. So the world values, this is really called, being a good person is really called self-righteousness. Self-righteousness. That's what it's called. In other words, look at what I did. I'm so good. I do all the things. I'm such a good Christian. Look at me. I've really got this thing down. But here's what God values, a broken spirit, a broken spirit. It says here in the scripture, in Ephesians 2, 8, God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for it because it's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. He's saying that we are saved by faith through his grace and mercy, not by what we bring to the table, not by our good deeds. And he says, it's got to be that way because if it's not that way, that you would boast about how you saved yourself. Psalm 51, 17 says it this way, the sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart. God is looking not for the sacrifices that we can offer or the good things that we can do, but a broken and repentant heart towards him. Luke 18, 9 gives us a parable. And listen to this parable. parable. To some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. And I guarantee you that among this group of 100 plus tonight, there is someone in here that is confident about their own righteousness that looks down in judgment on somebody else in this room, guaranteed. This is who he's talking to, by the way. And this is what he says. 
Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers and evildoers and adulterers or even like this tax collector over here. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I receive. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even look up to heaven, but beat on his chest and said, God, please have mercy on me. I am a sinner. And Jesus says this, I tell you that this man rather than the other went home justified before God for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Next one. I wrote popularity, fitting in. Popularity, fitting in. This applies to a lot of people here. Culture values it. We value it. But what does God value? Humility and alienation. Man, this is a tough one here, Jesus. How can we accept this? How can I? Ah, Jesus. How do I accept that? Alienation? That doesn't sound great. Uh, I might not fit in. Uh, Jesus, I was, I was kind of jiving with you that we got here. Listen to this. God values a heart that accepts that living for him means alienation from the world. James 4, verse 6. God opposes the proud but face shows favor to the humble. John 15, 18. Listen to this. If the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me first. Jesus is talking about himself. If the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Matthew 5, 11. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Matthew 10, 32, whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. The culture values popularity and fitting in, but the kingdom of God values humility and us being okay with persecution, separation, and alienation. That's hard. Last one. Worldly pleasure, having fun. Just having fun. World value, values that, right? Just having a little fun. Man, I'm just having fun. I'll follow Jesus, you know, when I get out of college, man. Like right now, I just want to have fun. But God values a life that brings glory and honor to him. Brings glory and honor to him. Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Galatians 5, 16. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict for each other, so that you cannot do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God because they were never in the kingdom of God. That's why they won't inherit it. You could be a follower, but your heart never be given over to Christ. He goes on in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, those whose heart is given to Christ and who has been filled with the Spirit, is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there's no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, 
Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Worship team, you guys can come up. So here's what I want to leave you with. I want to leave you with this board. As you go to small group tonight, and I know this was a lot of scripture, but here's the thing. God's word is powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. And you need to understand that God's word is what's going to transform your life. God's word is what draws us more and more and sanctifies us, making us more and more like Jesus. And I think here's the thing that you've got to come to. When you look at your life and when you think about your values, do your values align with the culture or do they align with Christ? Because that's a big question. Do your values align with the culture or do they align with Christ? I want you to consider something. How is it that a person can achieve all of this? Outward beauty and appearance and wealth and power and success and being a good person, helping Old ladies across the street, that's what you said. Be popular. I think about the young lady who, right here from North Carolina, who was a, a beauty queen and a few months ago killed herself. She had every one of those. Miss North Carolina. Outward beauty. More followers than you could even hope for on Instagram. Wealth because of her titles. Very popular. Did a lot of good for her community. So how is it that so many people we look at, that we know, influencers and athletes and celebrities and the people that we, we seem to value, how is it that they can achieve all of this and be miserable? Because it's not this that makes you whole. It's what God says about you that makes you whole. It's about these things. It's about what God values. It's about who God created you to be.